Hi all, this is the instructional set for the tunes The Green Hills of Tyrol When the Battle's Over and On the Road to Passchendaele. It's for those of the Shore Alba pipes and drums that are still developing or learning this set. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this set, it's just to cover the points that I would like you to pay attention to. Uh, first of all, the Green Hills of Tyrol, although it's undoubtedly the most common tune played by pipers worldwide, it doesn't mean to say that it's actually an easy tune. There's a lot in it, a lot of grips uh, in the main, uh, with some terluths and low G grace notes coming in after that. If we have a look at the first part, we'll play it nice and slow. I'll start again. One, two... Now, uh, we're using the music from the Army Cadet Pipes and Drums website. Uh, list on uh, the left-hand side of that website. Once you're there, it says Parade and Concert Music, and these tunes are listed under 3-4 marches. Points to note for that first part of the Green Hills. First of all, in bar number one, you're going to be coming from B to the grip on C. Try and get that grip nice and clean and correct. Remember, when you lift off the low G, raise both your B and C fingers together. There's loads and loads of time to get that. This tune is not played particularly fast, so please make sure that you get a correct grip. Also, coming towards the end of each line, at the end of uh, bar 3 in each line in part 1, or if you want to put it a different way, that's bar 3 and bar 7. Bar 3 and 7 finish with a G grace note to B, but that B then continues and becomes a Torluth on B. Please play a correct Torluth, don't just play a grip. It then goes down at the very end, down to a low G grace note on A. So, and, also loads and loads of time to get these doublings in as well. So, having covered these points, let's go back through part one. One, two... And it goes without saying, although you'll hear me say it time after time, please get the low G in your throw on D. It's the most common error uh, when people are trying to play a throw on D. There's no low G there. Let's have a look at part two, which is, in general, a little bit easier than part one. There's really just one bit I want to cover where 50% of pipers will make a false note. It's quite difficult to get this. Anyway, the first, the second part, sorry, of Green Hills of Tyrol. Please pay attention to where the long notes are in this version, that varies. Now, the bit I was talking about where false fingering comes in, if you look at part two, bar number four. You're coming from D up to an E and then immediately back down to a D doubling again. Very often you'll find that people will just keep the D finger up and not play low A when you're on the E. Please make an effort to play that E properly with the low A up. It is harder, but it's more correct, and it will make a difference to the sound of that E. So, the second part again for you. 
So long notes in that, I'm not going to go through the full tune, you can do that by yourself and use the version which I've put up of the full set. Loads of time for uh, your doublings there, please keep them nice and open. And let's move on to When the Battle's Over. When the Battle's Over is certainly not as uh, complicated a tune as the Green Hills of Tyrol. There's a lot less notes in it, there's a lot more long notes in it, so you can relax a little bit more. But... There are points that we have to pay attention to. I'll play the first part for you. So, in bar one, just as in the Green Hills of Tyrol, we are coming to a C grip from a B. Exactly the same as the Green Hills, please make sure and execute that grip correctly. Get down to low G, put the D grace note in in low G, and come back to the C, lifting both the B and the C fingers at the same time. Racing along to bar number three, we have a B doubling, a low G grace note to A, and a grip to B. Now there's nothing difficult about any of uh, these movements, but people can approach them and just try and muddle through them, uh, make their fingers wiggle and hope that it happens. So slow the thing down, play your B, your B doubling, low G grace note to A, and close down to low G, D grace note to low G, and back to B for your grip. <laughs> The last thing I would ask you to pay attention to is really just the timing of the final bar in part one. Not too worried if that D grace note to C goes astray there, but what we do have to have is a long B. In some versions of this, this bar is rounded up. I'm not going to play it because it might put you off. So this is uh, the first part of When the Battle's Over again. Remember, you will repeat the parts. Now, two beats on these notes at the end of each line, please give every note its full value. Don't jump off it, as this gives the impression that the tune is speeding up. It's not, but you are actually losing uh, portions of notes. So, part number two, uh, not terribly, terribly hard either. Uh, pay attention to the half doublings, and uh, just give everything else loads and loads of time. You've, the, these are big, big notes you have here, so please give us nice open doublings, nice correct doublings, make them open so that you can actually hear each embellishment contained in the movement. The second part then... Nothing really to go over, I'd, only, I'd ask you just to pay attention in bar uh, 2 and bar 6. Coming off the high G, we come to F with a half doubling. High G, F, G grace note on F, and that's your half doubling completed. Let's just uh, finish this one off. We'll play the second part again.
Now we move on to the third tune in our set, On the Road to Passchendaele, which was the third battle of Ypres. Uh, the words by Alan Bryden of Scotia, so in our circles you'll actually hear that uh, song sung uh, very often. There are also uh, pipes coming in at the end of this song very often, so you never know, we might actually get involved in it. Uh, the tune, written by Pipe Major Gavin Stodder, uh, Royal Highland Fusiliers, and then head of the Army School of Bagpipe Music and Highland Drumming. Uh, the only thing that you really need to watch in this tune is we have a cadence from E to C. I'll play the first time through the first part of this tune, and then we'll have a look at how we do that. It's very easy, don't worry about it. Before we move on to the cadence, let's just have a look at that last bar. Doubling on D and a Rodin, R-O-D-I-N, from D, low G, B finger, back to low G, and finishing on low A. Let's try that. That's a Rodin. There are other names for it. That's the, the official name in the Campbell Canterach, R-O-D-I-N, Rodin, from the doubling on D again. Let's go back to bar 2 and bar 6 and have a quick look at this cadence. Cadence being C-A-D-E-N-C-E. -E. Really a Pibroch movement but can be quite competently played in light music and I think it fits here very, very well indeed. Let's come from the F in bar 2. That's what you're seeing there. It's not a D grace note. It's actually moving through the D, although it is an embellishment, to the C. And you should achieve a rolling movement from the D, uh, sorry, from the E through the D to the C, like this. It's played in other tunes such as uh, the Kilberth Hills, optional in there, but it is uh, fairly common. So let's have a look at that again. We'll do the whole of bar two. We don't want to hear a... It should be through the D. Uh, and certainly not... It's not a D grace note. Please don't think it is. Um, so part one again. Finishing on that road and make sure you get the low G in there. Part two, what you can see there is there are, in the first instance we will play line three and line four. In the second instance we will play line three and line five. So that will be line three and then the line under brackets number one, followed by line three and uh, the line under brackets number two. The line under brackets number two, of course, only being what is actually contained in line two of the tune which I've already done. So this time, I think, uh, just to avoid any uh, uncertainty, we'll play the whole of the second part. There's nothing new in here. Uh, we might just uh, have a look at it and then there's nothing to go over. I'll decide once I've played it through for you. picking up anything 
in there that uh, should give you any great cause for concern. Uh, as usual, please get a hold of me if there's anything uh, really troubling you. And also, please run this past your own tutor or teacher, because it's very important that they know you're doing this. That's the three tunes. If you want to see them played together uh, at performance tempo, then they will be on the main group page. This is for the Pipers only, so thanks very much for this, and good luck with the tunes. <laughs>